This is a TV show called Flashpoint. It's centered around Donald Trump. That's all they talk about. That's all they love. It's an insane extremist TV show on Kenneth Copeland's Victory Channel. And of course, as we know, Donald Trump was convicted. He was found guilty on 34 counts of fraud or whatever. So I want to listen to their reaction. It's bound to be interesting. While we listen, we're going to play some Breath of the Wild 2, Tears of the Kingdom. Should just be in the background. Won't bother you too much. You never played before. Let's give these people a listen, see what they had to say about Trump's verdict. Welcome to Flash. Oh, that's not the leader of Flashpoint. That it, it, He's like the news guy. He's the leader of another program on this channel. Flashpoint. I'm Mike Garofalo with Victory News. Gene Bailey will be joining us from the beach. Pastor Hank Kuhneman, Constitution Coach Rick Green, and Greg Stevens will be joining us. Not a constitution coach. He's a scam artist. Rick Green is. And Gene, uh, for the special edition of Flashpoint. First, we start with the historical guilty verdict of former President Donald Trump in the New York hush money or so-called hush money trial. So-called hush money trial. Yeah, you're right. You know, it wasn't a hush money trial. It was a fraud trial. Why did it get the name hush money trial? Kind of not really like representative of what happened, right? A few hours ago, after deliberating for essentially a day and a half, less than 12 hours, the jury returned the verdict. Donald Trump found guilty in all 30. I think it was 15 hours. I could be wrong. Four felony counts of falsifying business records. The former president spoke to the media shortly after the verdict was announced. This was a disgrace. This was a rigged trial by why are we even listening to Donald Trump's reaction? We all know what it's going to be already. Why is he be playing this? A conflicted judge who was corrupt. It's a rigged trial, a disgrace. They wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. Who cares what you were at? It doesn't matter. You got a jury of your peers. But did this guy just want Trump supporters? Those aren't your peers. Those are your followers. It's different. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. The real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here and everybody knows what happened here. You know, Donald Trump cannot reverse this. Even if he won, he can't reverse these charges because they're state level charges, not federal. He can't even pardon himself if these were federal charges. The Constitution does not say anything about a president pardoning himself. And that was obviously not the purpose of the pardon in the first place, right? But he's going to stretch it just a little bit until it fits exactly what he wants. And in some cases, outright break it. Come up with some crackpot conspiracy that kind of makes the law fit a little bit to his ends. Not for nothing, but this is exactly how Hitler came to power, was by stretching things as far as they would stretch and breaking it just a little bit when it got there. What Hitler did was not legal, taking power the way he did, but it stretched the bounds of the Constitution, and Donald Trump is doing the exact same thing here, even advocating for breaking the Constitution, doing away with it completely. And Donald Trump didn't stop there. He wasted no time pointing a finger at Joe Biden and the Biden administration. And this was done by the Biden administration. But it wasn't. It was a state-level charge. Again, the pardon does not apply to state-level charges, and the president has nothing to do with state-level charges. It wasn't Biden. In order to wound or hurt an opponent, a political opponent, and I think it's a, just a disgrace, and we'll keep fighting, we'll fight till the end, and we'll win. Like, n not only did Biden have no control over it from a legal perspective because it was a state level charge, but he never said a word about it when it was happening. He didn't say Trump should be convicted. He didn't say this is the right thing. He didn't say any of that stuff. And there's absolutely zero evidence that Biden said anything to any people in positions of power in New York City or whatever to get this to go the way he wanted. So, Gene, for the first time ever, a former president was charged with and found guilty of a felony, in this case, 34 charges. Not surprisingly, some political analysts are calling this verdict a travesty. Check out the water. It's texture mapped. I guess they texture map the water. Wa I'm sorry. I guess they texture map the water when it's far away. It's interesting. I didn't realize that happened. It's the exact same pattern all across the entire water. And I guess when you get closer, it changes a little. 
Sorry, step back a little. Just not surprisingly, some political analysts are calling this verdict a travesty. Okay, these are weasel words. What political analysts specifically? Who? Who are you talking about that's calling this a travesty? Other than Donald Trump and his sycophants. No. And, and what's a political analyst? It's a commentator, right? He's framing it up like a political analyst is somebody with serious legitimacy in the political sphere that, I don't know, went to school for political science and understands the history of political situations and all that. That's, that's not the case. What he means when he says political analysts is people who agree with Donald Trump already. God, I can't, I don't have the time reversal thing yet. That sucks. Back to you. And nothing wrong with political analysts. I'm a political analyst. I'm just saying, like, you can't say some political analysts because their knowledge of journalism and how it works and their journalistic integrity is variable. Political analysts could be really, really good regarding integrity and honesty, or they could be really, really bad, like this guy. Quick interjection, this won't take long, I promise. I'd appreciate it if you watched to the end of the video or at least a couple extra seconds because YouTube bases its algorithm off of watch time. The more watch time a video has, the further the video will go. Also, take a look at my website, owenmorgan.com. I'm selling my book, Understanding Jehovah's Witnesses, 400 pages, and my second book, 100 Questions for Jehovah's Witnesses, which is about 80 pages. And you can find them both there on the website. Audio form, ebook form, whatever. It's about my experiences within the religion and the the history of the religion generally. The 100 questions are intended to challenge a religious leader, so I'd appreciate it if you give it a read. Okay, back to the video. Thanks, Mike. Glad to be with you guys tonight. Uh, first off, Mike, what are you hearing from around the news world? Is there shock at this, or did they kind of expect it? Yeah, I, I want to say people were kind of expecting this. I think people were hoping this wouldn't happen. We would which people get to this place. This country wouldn't have to go through this mess. But you know what? We're here, and, and it was not the biggest surprise. Back to you. No, it's not. Thanks, Mike. All right, let me bring in uh, Rick Green and Hank Kuhneman. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us tonight. Of course, I was supposed to be at the beach, which I am, so we put this together at the last moment uh, to be joining. Uh, I mean, he knew when the verdict was happening, didn't he? Uh, all right, so, Rick, let's talk about that. Same question. Are you surprised at this verdict? No, I think we've all been kind of prepared for this, right? We've been so shocked over the last few years that the justice system has uh, devolved to this. That That's not what happened. The justice system is, surprisingly, upholding the rule of law. Donald Trump unequivocally and beyond question violated the law in New York State and the Constitution. Committed for, I'm not, the, I'm sorry, not the Constitution. He violated the law in New York. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. It's wild to me that he could just make brazen claims like this completely out of the blue and not back it up with anything. Uh, we, we expected this to happen. And Gene, this might surprise you. Man, I'm going to say great. I'm glad. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just claim God's word right here. You know, we're supposed to count it all joy when we experience various trials, which we're experiencing as a nation right now. We also know that what the enemy means for evil, God's going to turn to good. And we know that all things work. Any five minutes now, right? We're together for good for those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And I truly believe from a, just a practical perspective, this is good in the long run because... To be fair, he knew when the deliberation started, but not when the jury would conclude. Yeah, I, I guess that's true. But why did he plan to go to the beach when the de deliberation even started? I get maybe he planned this a long time ago. I guess I didn't give him that much. I believe from a, just a practical perspective, this is good in the long run because all those people that have been abused by the justice system over the last few years who did not have the platform or the... No, we, nobody is being abused on the Donald Trump side by the justice system. Dude lives in an alternate reality. Voice of a Donald Trump, their voices are now going to be heard because millions of people are going to say, what? Are you kidding me? I mean, they're going to begin to learn over the next few... Dude, I suck. I suck. Why did I do that? The people are going to say, what? Are you kidding me? I mean, they're going to begin to learn over the next few weeks just how corrupt this judge was. Who is they? You know, we've all been listening. We've all been paying attention, but most people haven't. Now they're going to learn how corrupt this judge was, that his daughter was making money off of. OK, this is about as disgusting and corrupt as it gets. And Rick Green knows this. He was a politician in Texas and he ran to be a judge. I believe he's a, he, I'm sorry. I believe he has a law degree, a J.D., which is just like a basically like a master's degree. It's the first level 
in law school. PhD, I think. It's equivalent to a PhD, but you can go one step beyond JD. Anyway, he has a law degree, and he knows that what he's saying right now is a lie. He must. You can't convince me he doesn't know. Most people have it. Now they're going to learn how corrupt this judge was, that his daughter was making money. He must know that how corrupt and, uh, and how wrong it is for him to make all kinds of claims about a judge's family members like this. This is tampering with the legal system, if I've ever seen it. Maybe not witness tampering specifically. Donald Trump had that one in the bag. But attacking a judge's family, this is exactly what the mob did. This is mob behavior. Quick interjection, this won't take long, I promise. I just want to say I'd appreciate it if you check my Patreon. owenmorgan.com slash Patreon to find it. YouTube's algorithm goes up and down, so I can never predict where it's going to be. Having patrons gives me some level of stability. Okay, back to the video. Money off of this trial and off of the Democrats, mm -hmm. uh, that this case was thrown together with right. out-of-date statutes and statute of limitations that were passed. No. That Donald Trump was not even allowed to bring witnesses that he wanted to bring. I mean, that's in the Constitution that you... They're just complete bullshit. All of it is bullshit. That whole thing about statute of limitations, the people on the, the screen here on Flashpoint, Hank Kuhneman, Rick Green, Gene Bailey specifically, and a whole bunch of other people on, Fla on um, the Victory Channel claimed that New York changed the laws specifically so that they could charge Donald Trump, and that's not true. The law changed completely independently of anything to do with Donald Trump to remove the statute of limitations on certain offenses, which I'm all for. I think that's good. The statute of limitations exists because at a certain point, you know, witnesses die and information goes stale. And, you know, cold cases are way harder to solve than others. And you're way less likely to get an accurate conviction in a cold case than otherwise. That's why statute of limitations exists in some cases, but not in others. Statute of limitations has existed since before DNA evidence existed, since before cameras or, you know, video cameras were common at the very least, before video cameras were common. So statute of limitations has way less legitimacy. There's way less of a need for it today than there was, um, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100 years ago. And in some jurisdictions, that's changing. That changed in New York State or New York City, I think. And the fact that it changed allowed, I think it was E. Jean Carroll, maybe, to sue Donald Trump. It's not even a criminal charge. It's just a lawsuit. I believe that's what, what they're specifically referring to. But they twisted that into, they changed it specifically so that Donald Trump would be charged with a crime. No, they changed it. And as a result of that change, well, all these, you know, all this time later, now Donald Trump can be charged. You can call witnesses for yourself and confront yeah. those against you. So anyway, mm -hmm. I just think in the long run, we're going to count it all joy because this is actually exposing, as we've said here on Flashpoint, what happened. And, uh, and so I don't want people to be depressed by this. I think they should be encouraged that right. the light is being shown on the corruption. Yeah. Just complete bullshit. That's and right. this is going to be the inflection point where we can turn this thing around. Absolutely. Amen. I'm going to get to Pastor Hank. But, Rick, let's walk through the process because I've already been inundated with text messages and uh, emails like, All right, so what happens next? I understand <clears throat> three, three months until he's actually supposedly uh, going to get uh, punishment doled out. Uh, three months. No, it's July 11th, I think, or July... Yeah, I think it's July 11th when he's going to be sentenced. I'm not sure what they're talking about three months. This happened in early June or late May. It's only like a month and a half. When the time comes, are they going to say the judge is jumping the gun and sentencing him before he was supposed to and all that stuff? I'm sure they will. Aside from all of that, um, Donald Trump, as a convicted felon, was supposed to show up to the probation office at the courthouse to fill out forms so that, you know, the, the courthouse, the judge and the jury or whoever, or I'm sorry, so that the courthouse, the judge and the legal workers, the probation officer, they can all contact him if need be. And it's like a pre-sentencing type of deal, depending on how severe the crime is and the person's flight risk and stuff like that. The jury may, or I'm sorry, the judge may or may not choose to remand him into custody Pending the trial, dude. I keep missing where I'm supposed to do an uh, an ascend here and 
like not even paying any attention. Guess who didn't show up and do it? Donald Trump didn't show up and fill out the form. In any other case, dude would be in jail. If it weren't Donald Trump specifically, the person would have gone to prison probably for four full years. That's like the maximum per charge. If they wanted to do all 34 charges, it could be 126 years or, or whatever. But they would have gone for at least four years in any other circumstance. He's actually supposedly uh, going to get uh, punishment doled out. Uh, does in between now and then the appeal process kicks in? What happens next? Yeah, Gene, you know, I mean, there's a to my knowledge, an appeal is not feasible. It's almost certainly not going to happen. It is real difficult to get an appeal on a jury, a criminal jury trial. Possible, but real hard. That's why before going to trial, a lot of the time people will plea bargain. They'll settle. And that's why Donald Trump didn't settle, didn't agree to a plea bargain, because that would have been a that would have been him succumbing to his charges with a whimper rather than a bang. And he wanted it to be a bang like this. He wanted to whip people into a blood frenzy over it. And here we are. There's a decent chance here that, that they would get an appellate process going fast enough that finally somebody with some sanity would slap this down. An adult would step into the room and say, no, we're not going to let you jail the former president of the United States over these absolutely bogus charges. I mean, this is, you know, Joseph Stalin would be so proud of Joe Biden right now. I mean, oh, give me a break, dude. He knows this is a state level charge. He knows this is not Joe Biden's doing. He has a J.D., he is a lawyer or has a law degree or whatever. He knows this. When I see things like this, people who have law degrees and understand all this stuff inside and out and are blatantly falsifying information to further their own political interests, what else do I have to conclude? I, I can't conclude anything else other than he's intentionally lying and twisting things around for his own ends. How else do I interpret this but bad faith? He, he, he is uh, looking up from hell right now saying, great job, Joe. You're doing this even better than I did. Stalin looking up from hell. With my show trials uh, in, in communism. Uh, but but no, I, I think there is a chance for some sort of appellate thing to, to put a stop to this. I think I've seen maybe mid-July was when they were going to sentence, maybe right before the... Uh, yeah, early July. It was uh, July 11th. Uh, right. Republican convention. That would be the best for the Democrats in terms of show trial and when right. this would happen. Like there's, you know, the date changes based on when the jury deliberates. It wasn't set in stone that this is when sentencing was going to happen. This is just kind of how it played out. It, did they bring the charges against him and set dates based on when the election was happening? Maybe. Uh, that That's probably a bad political calculation though because it would get people like wound up right before everything happened but i don't know I, I do think there's a really good chance he doesn't actually go to jail over this let's not forget this these are minor 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 charges yeah these 34 felonies minor minor charges i mean these fraud charges just entering fraudulent stuff in your books or keeping two sets of books that's a misdemeanor normally but it bumps up to a felony if you commit this fraud with the intent to commit another crime basically so he did this he altered the books to engage in election interference by paying somebody off to prevent them from whatever and in an attempt to evade taxes also those are each separate crimes and there was a third one i don't remember what the third one was but that's what made it a felony the fact that he did those things so the judge instructed the jury like they you know they write jury instructions he in the jury instructions when they were deliberating the judge said he doesn't have to have committed tax fraud or election interference he has to have committed one of those things so if you think he's committed one of those things then vote to convict if not then don't vote to convict that's what the judge said in the jury instructions and they're using the fact that he said you don't have to decide on all three as they're interpreting that as the judge said it doesn't have to be a unanimous verdict. That's not what the judge said. That's not what was happening. You're just fabricating all of this out of the ether, of course. Aren't these guys supposed to hate adulterers? Yes. As a matter of fact, they are.
But as they say, Trump is an imperfect vessel. They call him, they, they say he has the Cyrus anointing. In the Bible, King Cyrus was from the Persian Empire. The Persian Empire, um, the Babylonian Empire captured Jews after destroying Solomon's temple in 586 BCE. They took a bunch of Jews into captivity away from Israel, like 20% or 5 to 20% of them or something, and enslaved them. And after some period of time, I think it was 50 years or something, the Persian Empire rose up, took over the Babylonian Empire, and freed the Jews from captivity because they said no, no more slavery, basically. Well, no more slavery of Jews at the very least. Cyrus was not Jewish. He wasn't even a monotheist, as far as anyone can tell, as far as I know. He wasn't one of God's people, but he was working to God's ends. He was working to fulfill God's expectations and interests by freeing the Jews. So they say that, when I say they, I mean Johnny Enlow specifically and the people on screen here, say that Donald Trump has the Cyrus anointing and that he's not necessarily a religious man, but he's fulfilling God's interests all the same. So that's how they get around that weird little... I mean, this is all part of the Trump theology. Oops. God, I'm just not... I'm hitting so many weird buttons here. But we know that the New York Democrats are doing everything they can to try to see him actually behind, uh, you know, a, 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 a prison cell. They so has nothing to do with New York Democrats. Want to see the bars, man, on, on the other side. They want to see... I want to see accountability for... I want to see justice. I want to see somebody actually pay the price for the crimes that they committed. Not because I want retribution, not out of revenge. I don't want to punish somebody just for the sake of punishing them. I'm doing it because if this person faces consequences for their actions, the next person is way less likely to do the same exact thing. That's why I want to see this. Trump on the other side of bars. That's, That's their right. dream. They lie awake at night trying to figure out how to make it happen. But, but I think odds are that doesn't happen. But that... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't usually get an opportunity to dream about Donald Trump because I'm busy dreaming about your not, your mom when I'm not with her. Still gives Joe Biden what he wants in the campaign to be able to say it's it's a convicted felon. We can't allow it. You know, that's what they're already right. screaming and, and yelling. But I think it's going to increase our resolve and millions more people are flocking to Trump right now as a result of this. I don't know about that. Maybe at this immediate moment, people are like donating to him. But I don't I don't believe that this is getting him more support. Look at the big rally in the Bronx even before this happened. Look at the 100,000 people at his other rally. People are flocking, as we've said here on Flashpoint, for a year because they see the injustice. So I think it helps Trump in the long run for November. More importantly, it helps the country because it exposes the corruption. That we yeah, that's a good point. I'm not sure if it helps give Trump a, you know, kind of an air of legitimacy or innocence for this to happen. I don't think so. I think this is going to hurt Trump more than help him. Yoshi Stampede says in the instruction, they all had to agree guilt on a charge. They don't have to agree on the means or the path used to commit the crime. Yeah, there you go. That's a good way of saying it. Kind of struggling to get it out. But yeah, that's it. Yeah, 100%. To be for Trump is doing a very good job of trying to get himself in prison. I'm sorry. To be fair, Trump is doing a very good job trying to get himself in prison. Yeah. Every bit of this is Trump's doing. And in any other situation, any other circumstance, the person, if it weren't Trump, would be in jail already, long ago. Not necessarily because of the charge, but because of his behavior throughout the court case and afterward. The gag order, he would have been in jail the first or second time. He Well, first time he violated the gag order, really. He didn't fill out the documentation he's supposed to after the court Try, or after the trial took place. He would have been in jail for that, if nothing else. We can finally clean out the rot in our legal system. I, I so agree, Rick. And I, I got to tell you, I, it's, it's almost comical because no matter what happens, Trump goes up in the ratings, his poll numbers skyrocket. <laughs> Yeah, that's not necessarily true, but okay. Uh, you right. get a mugshot, mm -hmm. it ends up on coffee cups and T-shirts across. Dude, I love that they're acknowledging no matter what happens, even if Donald Trump is... A uh, crooked scumbag who's like committing crimes, he still goes up in the ratings. I love that they, they seem to be acknowledging this. Uh, so, this is, I want to tell everybody at home just calm down. It's going to be okay. I That's know right. it, it's right. it, to, for some of us, it was shocking, it was surprising, but not really. You, you kind of knew 
if we were at this point, it could go the rest of the way. But let me bring in. I'm surprised. Usually these people want to whip people into a blood frenzy over stuff. I'm surprised that they're saying just calm down here. And uh, Pastor Hank Kuhneman from, from his home there in Omaha. Pastor Hank, uh, yeah. we've talked about this, <clears throat> that, that this is not a time to freak out or panic, yeah. but just to hold on. T talk to the people. Well, first and foremost, thank you for having me on, Pastor Gene, and you as well from the, the beach there. It seems like every time you go on vacation, something happens. Last time, the raid, the, you know, the raid on uh, Mir Largo, and now this. But here's what God wants Mir Lago, love the name. Wants us to know, uh, those of you that have been tracking with the Lord, you know, we've been doing this, Pastor Gene, for almost four years now, coming up here in just a few months. And there were times when we would look at the camera and we would speak. Uh, perspective that at the time it did not look like it was even realistic or that it would play out. Uh oh, yeah. Okay. Now Hank Kuhneman is claiming that he has the mandate of heaven and God is giving him prophecy and all that junk. He had foresight into the situation, just like when he claimed that Donald Trump was going to win the 2020 election and then Trump lost. Whether you think I'm false or not, if that's what you think, then you can take your opinion and you can shove it. Remember that little ditty? Uh, according to what we were saying. And one of such example, God said there would come a time when things would begin to be heated up in our country, but there would be a boomerang. In other words, those who would seek for indictments, they themselves would be indicted. Those that would bring accusations, the accusations would boomerang any five minutes now, right? It's going to happen. And would be turned on them. We have seen that through the process. Over no, we haven't. What are you talking about? This is actually part of uh, something that he calls the flop flip prophecy, famously, because God speaks in American idioms, of course. Hank Kuhneman talked about the flop flip prophecy like forever ago. And when it flopped, if you will, no pun intended. Okay, pun intended. He doubled and tripled and quadrupled down on this flop flip prophecy thing. But watch, for you have heard the saying, flip. I'm sorry, yeah, flip flop is an American idiom. As Jess Proxy points out, flop flip isn't an American idiom. Flip flop is. Flop. But I speak to you this day, flop flip. You say, what do you mean? I speak flop flip because. Yeah, what, what the hell does that mean? What a bizarre saying. I speak flop flip because the agenda of hell and those who have agreed and thought that they could steal this land through your election and steal the future from your children, it shall flop. So the attempts to vote somebody in other than Donald Trump, I guess, will flop, okay? And then Watch what shall arise, whistleblowers after whistleblowers. They shall not only see that their agenda has flopped, they will begin to flip. That's a flip, uh, the flop flip prophecy. And this came out um, late August 2021. So it was about uh, eight months after Trump left the presidency, about um, 10 months after Trump lost the presidency or nine months, maybe. Yeah, about about nine months. And it was before all of Trump's court battle stuff. But I guess he thought that it was going to flop and people were going to reveal the secrets or whatever. Okay. Well, that flopped. And God says there will be a turning of my hand and a turning of their, of their mouths. And they will speak loudly and they will turn on one another and they will expose one another to save what they would think their own future. So people are going to reveal, you know, the secrets that others have to save themselves, but it's not going to work. Watch for the great flip. And the Lord says when you... I mean, I've been watching. It's been like years now. How many years? Three, four years? Still waiting. Any second, right? See this? It will flip in this nation too. Anyway, yeah, that's the flop flip prophecy. And Hank Kuhneman quadrupled down on it multiple times. This one is from, I think, early, wait, yeah, early, uh, 
January 2022. Here you go. Jesus approved of God in signs, wonders, and miracles. We need to get our eyes on the Lord, and he is not done with this nation. And I'm telling you, he is pushing back. He is bringing justice, and we are going to see the manifestations of these things with some great changes that are coming. It's not all It's not all going to be right away, but we're going to see it unravel, and flop flip is going to continue in the land. Oh, 100%, absolutely. Of America. Yeah, 100%. I believe him. Without question. Anyway, that's the whole flop flip thing. And uh, that's just over the last. That's Hank Kuhneman making a fool of himself. And would be turned on them. We have seen that through the process over the last four years. No, the flop flip prophecy flopped terribly or hilariously, depending on your um, viewpoint. I, I prefer hilariously personally. Another specific uh, encouragement tonight is, remember, God said, you will see things flop. It will look like it is absolutely over. And then it will flop and then flip. And it will turn in the way of the favor of God. Um, that's not what he said. That's not the flop flip prophecy. He said people were going to flip on each other and reveal the secrets of the deep state or whatever. What happened? Is he changing the prophecy right now? That's what it sounds like. You have to remember, Daniel in the lion's den, for anyone looking on the outside, it looked like Daniel uh, would have been eaten by the lions. Come on, President Trump has been thrown to the lions, but there's something that happened to Daniel, and that was this, the preservation of God, which is on our country right now, and the preservation that is on this president. And in the same way, God is going to close the mouths of these absolute lunatics who think that they're going to get by with this. They're not. It's going to flop. It's going to reverse. And the lion's mouths will be closed. And what's also important is you have three things happening. This is no surprise. So we just need to relax. No. Anyone with any common sense, Pastor Gene, and I have walked uh, my three German shepherds with my little Shih Tzu. So we have four dogs I walk at the same time. And I think it's Shih Tzu, isn't it? Shih Tzu? Maybe I'm wrong. People stop me, including Democrats, and they say, we are outraged with what we're seeing in uh, this case with New York. Which Democrats? Who, specifically? Are you just, like, waving to some ambiguous group of people and saying, these people all support me? New York. This is absolutely bogus. This should not be happening in our legal system. And all of this is going to begin to backfire. So you have the obvious. The obvious is this is a scam. Second, according to what Rick said, who's a, a legal, uh, you know, expert. I mean, no more a legal expert than any lawyer. He's just a lawyer. And he's not even like maxed out. He, you know, there's another degree he could get beyond just his JD, just his law degree. He could specialize in something specific. But I guess, it, yeah, I mean, I, I guess he's more of an expert in the law than other people. This thing is going to begin to play out, and there has to be an appeal. And there's going to be something that is going to bring the justice of God that ultimately will set this thing in order. Third thing, lastly, there's the prophetic. You cannot discount what God has said ahead of time just because— Don't tell me what I can't do. God didn't say jack shit, okay? Hank Kuhneman said this stuff and claimed that God said it. I don't want to hear any of this nonsense. Because it doesn't look like it. OK, you have to let the prophetic words play out. God said these things would fall like feathers. Pastor Gene, we have said that on Flashpoint before all of these indictments. Look at all the other things that happened with Georgia and the and Mir Lara going. It's all falling apart. It doesn't mean when God says that like feathers are going to fall apart and have no weight. It doesn't mean there isn't going to be uh, an indictment. It doesn't mean that they're going to not put watch this a mug shot. You know, they're 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 gonna they're gonna try. But so I claim this stuff isn't going to happen and the enemy's attempts will fail. But when you see the enemy's attempts succeeding, it doesn't mean that I was wrong. Uh no, that's exactly what it means. It means the ultimate outcome. This is what you have to hear. Those of you that are So when he says Link is kind of tiny, yeah, that's intentional. Link is intentionally androgynous. Looks like it, it, you know, Link could be a boy or a girl. And the reason for that is because Link was supposed to be, oh shit, Link is supposed to be the link between the player and the game, hence the name. Although the name was also given later, it was applied to the fact that he was the link between different 
stories or whatever, different like kingdoms, different times, stuff like that. Anyway, <laughs> oh shit, yeah. Anyway, I thought it was kind of interesting. We're playing Breath of the Wild too. Try, but it means the ultimate outcome. This is what you have to hear, those of you that are watching. The ultimate outcome is it will have no weight. It's going to fall apart. Why? Because we have stood and we have God's attention. And just like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there is the intervention of God that comes. And when God's intervention comes, what looks hopeless begins to be injected with the hope of God. What looks like it won't turn out right, it gets set and brought into order by God. And this I mean, didn't he say this like three, four, five years ago? He said, even when it looks like it's not right, it'll be fixed by God. And then Trump lost the election and Biden was inaugurated. Do you think maybe that was God's attempt to set things right? I mean, we've got people praying for God's will to be done regarding the election. Like Franklin Graham, famously, recently, before Trump received his felony, Franklin Graham released this tweet. Today, join me in praying for former President Donald Trump. We pray that God's will be done. This is like one of the top televangelists in the country. His dad, Billy Graham, was a televangelist, too, throughout the radio era. Extremely influential. It seems to me that that means that God's will was done, right? He prayed for God's will to be done, and here we sit, with Trump indicted and then convicted and kicked out of the presidency. How is this not God's will being done? If it's not, if you pray for God's will to be done— and then what you want doesn't happen. You didn't want God's will to be done. You wanted your will to be done. This is what the Lord is doing. He wants you to be encouraged. He's involved. He's got his hand on this country. He's got his hand on President Trump. And this, too, will fail. Amen. All right, uh, Rick, I, I knew you had a comment there. Go ahead. Well, I, first of all, uh, Hank pointed out something that I had forgotten, that you went on vacation when the when the raid happened. So if Trump wasn't so busy right now, he'd probably be texting you saying, uh, Gene, please don't go on vacation anymore. Like never, <laughs> ever again until really? I'm done with it. Right, because there's like a link between the two. This is a classic correlation versus causation problem. I know it's a joke, but it kind of shows their mindset in this whole thing. They don't understand the difference between I did something and something else happened at the same time, completely unconnected, and I did something, and as a result, something happened. They're not the same. With public life. Uh, but, but I got a confession to make. I, I, I really did think several times over the last year and a half that, that Hank just had the wor not only the worst dad jokes in, in the history of dad jokes, but I thought, man, what he's saying, I just, I, I, I don't, man, I had a, I would, I would really have to struggle and say, can that really happen? And, and he would have these prophecies, and I'd be like, Man, I hope that happens, but Lord, help my unbelief, right? And I cannot, I mean, here we are, and we got the whole Fannie Willis thing where she was totally discredited. This judge— Fannie Willis is not totally discredited. She's the other prosecutor in Georgia who has that uh, election interference case against Trump. I don't remember exactly what the situation is with that, but it's not looking like that's going to move forward, unfortunately, at least until after the election. And— um, these people like demonized Fannie Willis nonstop. They would not shut up about her being evil or whatever. That's not her being discredited. That's you attacking her. Very different. In this case has been totally discredited. Everybody knows that his daughter's been making money as a Democrat operative. Uh, the judge. No, I'm just completely made up all of it. Sometimes they fabricate things right out of the ether. Nothing true about any of it. And sometimes they twist things around. Until it's just like it doesn't match reality at all anymore. Uh, uh, I get this is a case where they're distorting it, actually, because there was some truth to his daughter being involved in politics to some degree at one point. But she's not a Democratic operative working to undermine. Blah, 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 blah. Nor is the father. You know, a lot of dads don't share the political values or ideals of their kids. Why are you judging a parent for what the kid does? Off of this stuff, uh, the Jack Smith stuff, discredited all of these things. It wasn't discredited. Even with the, the, the you know, conviction today, discredited in the public eye. Falling. Her name is Fawny, like a baby deer. Fawny, I'm sorry, Fawny. I didn't realize that. I'm, I'm going to fix that. Uh, make sure that I say it correctly, like Kamala. Kamala, I started saying that correctly too.
off of this stuff. Uh, the Jack Smith stuff discredited all of these things, even with the 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 so, you know conviction today discredited in the public eye, falling like feathers. Everything that Hank has, has been saying, it's happening. It's, and, it's just false. He's wrong. And and I really, part of what surprised me was they're usually better at this. Like, usually they go after one of our people and they create who is they? Create these charges and they make it look really good. And then they go after one of their own. Dude, are you counting how many they's he fit in the sentence? Listen one more time. Let's count them. I really, part of what surprised me was they're usually better at this. Like usually they go after one of our people and they create these charges and they make it look really good. And then they go after one of their own that they wanted to get rid of anyway. So it looks like they're being unbiased and that they're being, you know, not a two tier justice. They, they have failed miserably at that over the last year. They have shown that's uh, so nine or 10, depending on how you count. He kind of skipped over the, they I'm counting that as two. He hit it 11 times within like a, what a 10 second uh sentence or whatever who is they who are you talking about these are weasel words give me a source tell me what you're referring to there is no they out there when i say they i define the subject of the sentence first they won't stop saying they without defending or i'm sorry without defining the subject of the sentence it's very clear who i'm referring to right now they don't do that their true colors. They have shown how biased they are. They have shown how uh, hypocritical they are. They have shown that they're willing to lie. And My God, how many days is he going to fit in this? I, I've never heard so many days in one sentence. They are. They have shown how uh, hypocritical they are. They have shown that they're willing to lie and cheat and steal. And that stuff is being exposed and it's being shown. So my confession is, I have to admit, I wasn't so sure. I'm usually the optimist, right? I saw all this stuff coming down, and there was a part of me going, man, how in the world, Lord, how are you going to do this? He knows better. He's a lawyer, or he has a law degree, or whatever. He knows. He knows what he's saying is a lie. I don't know how else to interpret this. An ethics board should yank his bar license, if he even has one anymore. I'm not sure if he's licensed to practice. I don't know. Somebody should yank his license, though, really. This is so crooked. He can't possibly know. I'm sorry. He can't possibly think that he's telling the truth here. He knows that he's lying. He must know that he's lying. I think there's a lot of people at home that may be feeling that after the convictions today. I'm telling you, listen to what Hank just said. I've learned to listen, and God has increased my faith. I hope it does. He does it for you at home as well. <laughs> Pastor, yeah, Jim, amen. Can I add amen. To that real quick. You know, it, this is, this sure. is not a, just about Donald Trump. This is about what God That's wants right. to do in the earth. For something that he is looking at, and it's it's called redemption. And as long as the Spirit of God is in the earth, God always has a redemptive plan. You say, what is that? A plan of help and a plan of hope. And so God's not going to leave us you know, uh, without hope and without help, especially when we've got people that are using their faith. Faith is what moves God. Faith is what takes hopeless situations and turns them around. And people Okay, faith is the belief in things unseen. It's belief without evidence, as the Bible defines it, belief without evidence. How does faith turn situations around exactly? People go, how in the world did that happen? Faith and the intervention of God who honored our faith. So I say that because this isn't just about President Trump. It's about you, the people. It's about what Jesus is looking at. He wants a harvest. And we are in the middle of the greatest awakening and harvest that this world ever seen. But let's talk about what Rick said for a moment about the prophetic word. Because there's some of you that might be watching. You're going, you know, what, you know, prophecy, come on, I don't believe it. Well, what do you do when God prophesies out in California, for example, on a Flashpoint Live and says... Okay, hold on now. God didn't prophesy anything through Flashpoint. But okay, what do you think that he prophesied? God prophesies out in California, for example, on a Flashpoint Live, and says that there's going to be a triple rainbow that will appear in California that will be a sign of this nation that God is touching three generations. It happens a month later. What do we do when God said last year that there would be 100-degree temperatures that would not be seem to be broken over the country uh, for a purpose that God is showing redemption? Uh, and that happened. What do we do when God begins to say on April 7th of this year that uh, there's going to come a regime change in Iran and that their headship would be cut off? We just saw that happen. No, we didn't. There's going to be a regime change. God prophesied there's going to be a regime change in Iran. There isn't a regime change. Everything's exactly the same. One of their um, 
oh my god, what's the word I'm looking for here? One of their leaders, I think the president, died in a helicopter crash recently. But that doesn't mean it's a different regime. Do you know what regime change means? The list is going on and on and on and on and on of how many times God is honoring prophetic words. But there's one specific one that I think we have to go back to that I have here very briefly from May 20, May 23rd of 2021. God said there's two that he's put his hand on, Netanyahu and Donald Trump. And he lists them in that order. If Netanyahu is a, it's just an absolutely disgusting human being. The things that he's willing to do are horrific and grotesque and evil. I am horrified by Israel, the government of Israel, and their behavior, and the, 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 like their mindset, their justifications for the things that they're willing to do is no better than Germany in the 1930s. No better. They're doing the exact same things right now, minus the gas. Now, I mean, they've put handcuffs on people so tight and kept them on for so long that they had to amputate their limbs because of it. They've, ja they've jailed journalists. They've jailed people simply for expressing a, an opinion contrary to what the official Israeli government holds. There's nothing, nothing good about what Israel is doing right now. Not anything to do with Jews. I'm not saying Jews are bad or Jews are doing this or that, whatever. I'm not saying any of that. I deeply respect the Jewish community, the hardships that they've experienced, and everything else. And I stand up against anti-Semitism. I talk about Nazis all the time on this channel. But Israel is obsessed with linking their country, Israel, with Judaism. If you're Jewish, then you are Israeli and vice versa. It's called a nationalist government where everybody falls under the exact same umbrella. Jewish nationalist movement. It's an apartheid system where you can't be Israeli and not Jewish. That's what nationalist is, where everybody falls under the same umbrella in this regime. Israel is awful in every way. I just want to put that on record before we continue listening to Hank like lie and propagandize here. If we go back to what happened with Netanyahu, the same scenario. They were trying to criminalize Netanyahu. They were saying that he would be in jail. They were saying that his political career was... Again, how many they's do I have to count here? Who is they? Netanyahu, I'm sorry, Netanyahu should be in jail. I don't think he's going to go to jail, but he should be. I think the International Criminal Court filed a warrant for his arrest, which means if he enters certain jurisdictions, like uh, if, he, if he enters Germany or if he enters um, certain countries in Europe, he will be arrested and turned over to the International Court of Justice or whatever um, to face charges for what he's done. As will the, the members of Hamas, same sentence for them. But Netanyahu, and honestly the members of Hamas, they, they deserve it. Do you hear BB looks at World War II and isn't horrified? He's taking notes, right? What the hell is happening? This is insane. I have a long record of defending the Jewish community. A long record. Go back years and years. But this isn't about Jews. This is about a rogue government that is looking for an opportunity to murder people, seemingly. I don't know how else to interpret this. This is nuts. Guess what? God's prophetic word from May 23rd, 2021 came to pass. And Netanyahu... It wasn't God's prophetic word. It was you saying things that are so vague that they could apply to any situation, literally anything. ...who is at the helm of that nation at a time of war. Fast forward. If God did it for Netanyahu and said it about Netanyahu, the same scenario. They're trying... God didn't say... ...trying it. to indict Trump. They're trying to make him guilty. They would love to throw him in jail. But if God raised up Netanyahu, as he said, May 23rd, 2021, he's not done with President Trump, and he will be brought back to the place that God has said to this country, don't get an agreement with the media, the fake news. Get an agreement with the Word of God and with what God has said prophetically, and we will see this country made great again. Yeah, This is absurd. Man, in fact, yeah, man. let me bring in uh, Greg Stevens. Uh, Greg, you, you've got a word from our founder about what happened today. Uh, I think now's a great time for you to share that. I do. I spoke with him. The verdict came down while we were.
our founder. Is he talking about Kenneth Copeland? I think he might be. We're on Victory News, and as soon as the news was over, I spoke with Brother Copeland by phone. Yep. Uh, just after that verdict, and here's what he said. Oh boy, message from Kenneth Copeland on this. Let me write this one down. This is uh, 17 minutes. Kenneth Copeland's uh, opinion on Trump verdict. Spoke with Brother Copeland by phone uh, just after that verdict, and here's what he said. First of all, he said, we have to pray the will of God be done. We pray the will of God. And I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Then he said this. He goes, I want you to read the 112th Psalm, and I want you to read it to the people. So here it is. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. I okay, so he said we should pray for the will of God to be done. Well, Billy Graham, or I'm sorry, Franklin Graham already did that, right? And it, it seems to me that it turned out exactly how God wanted. That's the first thing. And second... What does this verse have to do with anything? This is Psalm, Psalms 112, 1 to 3. Psalms, by the way, means songs. It's the Jewish hymnal of the, of the time. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Okay, so blessed is the person that, like, follows God. God's commands? What, what is the point here? Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. And he drew, he drew point to that. He will never be shaken. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. Let me read that to you again because he emphasized that. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He is dispersed abroad. He is given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His honor will be exalted with honor. Then he said, I want you to focus on this last verse. And he said it in only that Kenneth Copeland voice, real bold. He said, and stand on it in faith. It's verse 10. The wicked will see it and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. I don't understand the point that he's getting at by reading these verses. What's... Is he implying something that I'm missing here? The desire of the wicked shall perish. That's the chapter he told us to read tonight. Then he said for us to pray the will of God. And so in doing that, he said to pray this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Uh, he recited the Lord's Prayer. Okay, doesn't everybody already know that for the most part? Why is he... I don't understand what the point of this message is. Your kingdom come... Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Gene, he went on to say this, and I thought this was very important. He admonished that we can't get into grief and that violence is not the answer. Talked about letting the peace of God that passes all understanding rule and reign in our heart. But don't respond the way the heathen respond. Don't respond uh, with violence. We cannot condone that. In wow, that's actually surprising. Is this Kenneth Copeland's message? Don't respond with violence? That kind of blows me away, actually. Anyway, what he's basically saying is what Pastor Hank said. It's going to turn around on them. That was his words for us tonight. It sure is. Okay, great. Well, any five minutes, right? Sure is. And let me bring uh, Rick back in here. Rick, uh, you know, what the words there of not responding, that really is, I think, what the left yeah. and the liberals want us to do. What, react with violence? Um, no, I don't. And I'm actually disturbed deeply by the fact that they even have to say this. Is to lash out, and then they can say, look, here, you got another J6 happening. <laughs> I love it, dude. You know what's they deny that January 6th was bad or perpetrated by Trump supporters. And if it was perpetrated by Trump supporters, then it was fine. It was uh, just and righteous 
It's what God wanted. Anyway, um, I find it really, really amusing that Tim Pool, not too long ago, released or was he had somebody on his channel. I think it was Laura Loomer and others on his channel who kept talking about murdering people, giving them the death penalty, quote unquote. And he instructed his guests not to talk about killing people because they will have legal liability if they do. And then the guests come on and they say it anyway. And he's like complaining about it. Like, bro, this is your fault. Why are you inviting guests on who say shit like this? If you don't want to have an audience that like believes in murdering people, then don't have that audience say, no, murder is wrong. This is literally the first time that I've ever heard that out of these people's mouths. And I watch the show a lot. Uh, right. Is that what you're seeing? Man, that would play right into their hands. Absolutely important uh, for that word to be heard. What Greg just said is is vital for people to understand. Uh, you know, MLK said it uh, this way. He said, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And this is hate. They hate Donald Trump. But don't forget what Trump has said. Who is they? Are they in the room with us right now? Yeah, people don't like Trump because he's a scumbag, a complete scumbag. And he's a religious figure. There's a theology behind him now. That's why people don't like him. He's also a stochastic terrorist directs his little sycophant nutcases in directions that he wants him to go. Disturbing. Said many times. They don't, they're not after him. They're after us. He just... Uh, somebody says what... Uh, Lord Falcona says, what is with the Bible and teeth gnashing? There's a funny story, actually. There's a guy who discovered this really old document in a book somewhere that like a... It's a little codex or whatever that he found... That was like an old addition to the Bible. Turned out that it was fake, but it basically said that that verse about Jesus saying, you know, there will be much weeping and gnashing of teeth when you die, when you realize that, like, you aren't in God's favor. And here's the additional part. The apostles said, Lord, what, what of those who, what of the, what about those of us who don't have teeth? And Jesus said, teeth will be provided. <laughs> Again, it's not real, but uh, it's really funny. It turned out to be a uh, forgery, an, an old forgery to my knowledge, but a forgery nonetheless. Donald Trump. But don't forget what Trump has said many times. They don't they're not after him. They're after us. He just stands in the way. And so, oh, give me a break. So anybody at home right now is thinking, how can y'all possibly, you know, be talking about Trump and the Bible and the same program and talking? Yes. Oh, my God. About what the Lord is saying and talking about Trump. You know, he's got mean tweets or he, he makes these terrible. Look, it's not about mean tweets. It's the fact that he's a domestic terrorist. He's inspiring domestic terrorist act on people. And he's costing the FBI an obscene amount of money as they try to track down terrorist attacks, bomb threats and actual bombings and shootings and all kinds of stuff. And we don't want to live in a in an environment where that's acceptable behavior. We, it's illegal to incite direct violence against somebody. That's against the law. That's not mean tweets. That's Donald Trump being a domestic terrorist. Very different. Well, endorsements or he's petty sometimes, all this kind of... As Hank said, it's not about Trump. Trump is a vehicle that God is using to help bring our nation back, just like he's using you at home and just like he's using us here at Flashpoint. There you go. This is part of the Trump theology. They believe that he's some special, unique character that has a role to play in God's prophecy. And so we have to respond the way the Bible tells us to respond. That doesn't mean we're not firm. Doesn't mean we don't have backbone. Doesn't mean we don't stand, but we do it in a peaceable way. We have all the peaceable tools we need to turn this thing around. It's going to take a lot of hard work, but we have to do it peaceably. And Gene, you know, there are people at home right now that are so frustrated. They're at the, you know, we say, I'm at my wits end. Right. I don't even know what that means. My wits end, but they're at their wits end, whatever that means. I mean, they're, they want to do something to make a difference. Well, it's not violent. This is not a situation where you storm the gate with the pitchforks. Really surprised that they're delivering this message. They must have like planned this out ahead of time. This is a situation where you go to the Lord, you spend more time in prayer and reading the word, but you also take action. Bring your friends and family over to your house. Start doing a biblical civics class. Start talking about biblical civics is his little course that he has that he, you know, I think he's part of like his organization. He has his biblical civics thing. It's just nonsense. It's basically how how does the Bible connect to the political realm? Like, how does the Bible oppose abortion? The answer is it doesn't. 
how does the Bible endorse this specific candidate, so on and so forth. It's all nonsensical garbage. About the things you can do, start getting more involved, go stand at the polls with signs, start donating to candidates, start donating to causes. There's lots. Go stand at the polls with signs. That's against the law. You can't go to polls with political messaging. You can't be within a certain um, number of feet or something. Can't be within a certain number of feet of a polling location with political messaging, which is a good thing. That's action to take but it's all peaceable action. That's very important for us to keep in mind. So true, so true. All right, let's keep going. So much more ground to cover. Uh, let me go back to you, Mike. Well, let's kind of check in around America. Uh, you've got, uh, I think- a Dude, I'm a really big fan of that guy's last name, Mike Garofalo, Garofalo, on point. A clip from Byron Donalds, is that correct? Uh, Gene, exactly. Florida Congressman Byron Donalds had this to say shortly after the verdict. This is a disgrace, flat out. This was a disaster for the country, disaster for the city of New York, disaster for New York State, disaster for America. I live in New York City. I live in Manhattan, as a matter of fact, like not even that far from the courthouse. New York City's fine. What are you talking about? There's no disaster here. New York State is fine. Like, what are you even going on about right now? You cannot have a prosecution when they come out with your indictment, not even tell you what the underlying crime is. What? It's fraud. What do you mean they didn't tell him the underlying crime? He had a fair trial, as fair as it gets. This is complete garbage. Through the whole trial, they wouldn't identify what the underlying crime is. Are you kidding me? Fraud. It's fraud. Felony fraud committed during the um, commission of another crime. Tax evasion and election interference. And there's a third one. I don't remember what the third one was. And the only time they do it is in closing arguments when the defense has already made their closing arguments. That is a travesty. This is, there is a reason why we have constitutional protections to be able to have your, your case adjudicated in a court of law. Not like this. Not where the fix is in from day one. The fix is not in. He was charged and tried and convicted by a jury of his peers. No, all right. Oh, I want to compare that with the Manhattan DA. Uh, set it up, Mike. Yep, here's Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg. And this is what he said. He came out and held a press conference shortly after this verdict came down. And he spoke for a while, but I thought this was possibly the most important part. The 12 everyday jurors vowed to make a decision based on the evidence and the law and the evidence and the law alone. Uh-huh. Their deliberations led them to a unanimous conclusion beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant, Donald J. Trump, is guilty of 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree Yep. to conceal a scheme to corrupt the 2016 election. So these people said, what was the crime? And then they play a clip of the crime being described by the prosecutor. What is going on in their heads? And while this defendant may be unlike any other in American history, we arrived at this trial and ultimately today at this verdict in the same manner as every other case that comes to the courtroom doors. All right. I love it that these guys are now being, they're recorded, uh, Hank and Rick. I mean, this will play back in the future. We're going to. Fantastic. That sounds great. It proves the fact that, well, it proves that the jury and the everybody else, they were not attempting to just put him in jail or just to silence his speech. It was about, what's the word I'm looking for? It was about his uh, degree of guilt. I'm going to play all of these things right back yeah. when this thing falls <clears throat> apart. Awesome. Uh, let me go to you first, Hank. You saw Alvin Bragg and Byron Donald, two uh, mm -hmm. totally different responses to what happened today. Uh, what do you think uh, about this this leftist response in this Manhattan DA? We're going to get into some background on him, but I want to get your take on what you just yeah. saw. Uh, when, they, when they say we're going to get some background on the Manhattan DA, what they mean is we are going to act as domestic terrorists and attack this guy. They don't mean we're going to get background on him. Very different. Well, first of all, again, this is no surprise. This was all a setup, including the, the jury. And all of it is going to continue to be exposed. But 
You know, Pastor Gene, as oftentimes when I look at things, I look at things and, and God will do a play on words with me. And, and I look at the guy's name, Bragg, and that's what he's doing. He's bragging that he now has brought 34, you know, uh, indictments against President Trump and that he successfully now uh, has got a guilty verdict. And really, that's what they want. They just want the, the fact that in the actual perception of things in the nation that President Trump is guilty of 34 counts, when really most don't even know what in the heck it is, and there's really not been a real uh, uh, clarity on the crime committee. They literally just said what it was. What do you mean there hasn't been clarity on the crime committed? They played it on their show just now. And, such. and so they're hoping that this is going to sway people uh, thinking that, no, how can you elect somebody who is guilty? But the fact that his name is Bragg, listen, people that go around bragging <clears throat> have an element of pride. And God specifically said that he gives grace to the humble. Okay, so because this guy's last name is Bragg, he can't be um, an honest actor? Is that, is that what he's saying? Because he has this last name. I wonder how many Christians in their audience have the last name Bragg that they're listening to right now. But he resists the proud, and God will deal with the prideful. And he said that he will bring the prideful down low. And I'm telling you, this thing is not over. And it's going to be amazing. They can set their uh, July 11th date all day long. But there is still a lot of time between now and that selected date for God to intervene. But how about you that are watching to continue to be like Moses, stand up in the face of God and say, God, we are expecting you to intervene against injustice. We cannot stand like they did in the book of Malachi, where they said, is justice ever going to come? In fact, God had to rebuke them and say, don't say that because God is a God of righteousness and justice. And if we will continue to stand for that, it will happen. I want to say this last thing. You know, Brother Copeland, such a brilliant man, and I thank God for him. And he said the word of the Lord. Yeah, you know, Kenneth Copeland is not a quote unquote brilliant man. He's absolutely awful. Lord, with Psalm 112. We need to pray that out and speak it out. But something that's also very important is Exodus chapter 14. And I'll say this very quickly Israel was in a place where it looked hopeless, like what some of you are thinking tonight. What, what's going to happen with our country? And God said to Moses, Quit crying and shrieking out to me. Lift up your authority. We're not talking about violence. We're not talking about the rod of violence. I find it super interesting that they're condemning violence. This is literally the first time that I have ever on this show ever heard them speak out against violence. He said, lift up your rod of authority and do what I said. Go take the land. And, and, and he said this, he said, and when you do stand still, you will see the salvation of God. Now he's not saying don't do anything. He's saying, exercise your authority, speak the word, Exercise your faith. Command the mountain of this uh, absolute lying demon that is released over our nation to be bound. And then he said, Exodus 14, 14, which I believe is going to come to pass. When we exercise our authority, it says, I, God said, I then will fight for you and you won't even have to lift a finger. In other words, now God has gotten himself involved with what is going on. Uh, on right now with President Trump. And really, all of us were on trial. That's what President Trump, this thing represents. And what it's done is it's now brought another level of God's divine intervention. And I'm telling you, we are going to see some incredible turnarounds. But we have to speak right. We have to get in agreement right. with God's word. I mean, the people watching the show, aren't they already in agreement with God's word and all that junk in his mind, at least? What is he, who needs to speak right? Who needs to be in agreement with God's word? The country? You're not going to convert all 350 million people to Christianity tomorrow unless you force it, unless you impose it upon them against their will. And also what God has been saying prophetically, and I tell you what, Pastor Gene, you are going to see something significant, just like in all the other cases, manifest right. that is going to turn this whole thing around. So that's going to be the great I agree. All right. You watch. Yeah. It sure will. It sure will. All right, Greg Stevens, let me go to you. You got some background, and I don't want to get too far away from that clip without you giving us background on uh, 
DA Bragg there. Uh, yeah, if you if they'll put that picture up of DA Bragg in the press conference, there's a guy standing next to him. Uh, you can see him standing right there to his left. Now that's Matthew Colangelo. You mean to our right, I assume? He worked for the DNC, Democratic National Conference. Then uh, he was number three at the Justice Department. So he's the number uh, okay. Yeah, everybody knows that Bragg is a Democrat. I mean, he was elected as a Democrat. Number three guy at Justice. He leaves that position and went to work for Bragg in a county DA position. Now, Trump, as you know, was under a gag order from Judge Bershon. He couldn't say anything. If he even said Matthew Delangelo's name, he would go to jail. At tonight's press conference, I mean, Trump violated the gag order like 50,000 times. He should have gone to jail like a long time ago, and he didn't, so whatever. I, I don't even know if this guy was covered under the gag order. But either way, it's witness intimidation and um, like legal intimidation against other people for him to do that kind of thing. Morally and legally wrong. And if Joe Biden, for example, was in a legal problem, or if Hillary Clinton was dealing with some legal issue and started calling out the names of witnesses or court workers or whatever, these people would be just as enraged by it. To Pastor Hank's point, Bragg has Coangelo standing right there next to him. He is, uh, he was number three at the Justice Department, and you can't tell me now that the Biden administration was not involved in this. There's an old saying from the I mean, they simply were not. I can say that because it's true. The Stalin days of the Soviet Union for political prisoners, and it was, it's attributed to Leventry Berea. Here's what it says. Show me the man, and I'll find you the crime, or show you the crime. And that's exactly what happened tonight. Yeah, that's a famous saying, but uh, that's not what happened. Gene? All right, Rick, exactly. uh, you hear Greg there. What do you, what do you think? Well, first of all, I have to school Hank a little bit here because as a Texan, I know a little something about bragging, all right? And uh, and my mama said, if it's true, it ain't bragging. And so if what Alvin Bragg is saying is true, then he's not bragging. But the fact... Um, no, that's factually incorrect. Bragging is when somebody is full of themselves and saying all kinds of stuff about how great they are, whether it's true or not. There are all kinds of people who are really skilled at things and uh, intelligent and, and whatever. And it's still bragging. What the hell are you talking about right now? Fact is, what he's saying is not true, and it's so easy to prove on so many levels. What did he say? He said the jury made its decision based on the evidence and the law, and only on the evidence and the law. Well, if you're the defendant and you're not allowed to present evidence like the Constitution allows you to do. He was allowed to present his evidence. He was allowed to call witnesses and everything. I don't know what they're, why are they saying this? It's factually incorrect. You're not allowed to present witnesses. How is the jury possibly making their decision based on the evidence? And they're not making it based on the law because Alvin Bragg made up the law by stringing these things together, by ignoring the statute. No, no, he did not. He did not, like, quote unquote, make up the law. This is exactly how the law is supposed to operate. This is an absolutely airtight ruling, an airtight, um, what do you call it? Like an airtight, oh God, what's the word I'm looking for here? An airtight case against Trump. Oh, damn, I knew I was going to die there. That's why I saved. It had to be airtight. As they say, if you shoot for the king, don't miss. Or if you aim for the king, don't miss or whatever. Trump has so much political power as an ex-president. If they're going to charge him with a crime, it better be bulletproof. And it was. Statute of limitations by making this stuff up. So what he's saying is an absolute lie. And then he said we're doing this in, in the same manner as we do every other case. Absolutely not true. Again, violated the statute of limitations. Strung a bunch of stuff together. Did they didn't violate statute of limitations. They, I don't know what he means, string things together. They followed the law as defined in their constitution and in their, their books. Didn't prosecute anybody else on these kind of things. So he's absolutely lying. It's false. I think actually Hank was saying it exactly right. I just had to pick on him a little bit, but there's no question that these people don't care about the truth. What Greg said is what's been done from the beginning. Show me the man, I'll show you the crime. That's what they've done with Trump. That's what they've done with these J6 defendants. That's what they do with the pro-life pro advocates that they're prosecuting. Like That's just wrong. This is all wrong. These are Marxists. They don't care about the law. They don't care about truth. They're willing to lie straight to our faces, right there on camera, even after the trial. We
he says as he literally lies straight to our faces on camera. Seriously, like this is shameless. We have to know what we're up against and have peace in knowing that God's in charge, have joy in knowing that we know who's sovereign and who and who's going to win in the very end, but we have to be firm. Yeah. And, yeah. and even what, what Hank was saying, you, when you stand still, you still got to be standing, right? Doesn't say lay on the couch still. That's right. We got to mm -hmm. stand up. That's right. We got to all come together. We got to be willing to be engaged in this thing, but do it peaceably and know that God's going to fight this battle yeah. with us. Um, so get active, but don't get violent. Okay. I like that message, actually. It sure is. In fact, just relax and know. You've heard you've heard some great stuff. This is that's like two hours worth of content in the first half hour. But we got so much more to talk about. Uh, what's coming up? We're going to go to break when we come back. Much more, and we're going to find out where Hank got that shirt. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We are. Is there something special about the shirt? Okay, sweet. Anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments. These people need help. Statute of limitations means literally nothing unless a statute is blown, which it wasn't. Yeah, that's true. I mean. They I didn't realize it wasn't blown. Statute of limitations is the amount of time that can legally pass until the crime is not possible to charge, basically, right? So in cases of, for example, um, rape or whatever, after a certain number of years, it's not possible to prosecute. After 20 or 30 years or something. I don't know if that's accurate. I'm just giving an example here. Now, they changed the statute of limitations in the state, I understand, which is good. We shouldn't have a statute of limitations on some things, certainly not anymore, since DNA evidence exists and cameras and stuff. But I'm not even sure, I guess, did it not apply to his case anyway? Like, these people are so full of shit, top to bottom. Anyway, just insane.